Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to talk about the new McLaren Elva. The Elva is McLaren's new Ultimate Series hypercar, an open-top, two-seat roadster, which no doubt is going to make for a phenomenal driving experience. But as always, with the release of a new McLaren, lots of you have been asking me if it's going to become a future Schmiemobile. Well, today we will take a first look at the new car, which to be honest, hasn't really been discussed all that much yet. Talk about some of the details, features, and some of the things that I promise you will not know about it so far. And then I'd also like to show you what I've got right here inside this box which has arrived from McLaren a gift for Senna customers and part of the kind of experience buying a car like this as well I will show you that later on but let's take a look then at the new McLaren Elva Let's have a look then at this new Elva. We'll talk all about it, what the name means, the power, the details, and lots and lots of bits of information about this car. Just to get started though, I will tell you at this stage, I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm not gonna be adding one to my garage later on, but we'll talk more about the price and what's involved in it as well. So stay tuned for that. But the Elva itself. Now, of course, as a McLaren customer, I've known about the car, known that it was coming for quite a long time now. It was originally known by the code name P26. P being project has always been the way McLaren have labelled their different cars. So the Senna was the P15 for example, the well going back P11 was where it started with the new McLaren automotive with the MP412C. So we've always had these different code names. P26 was given to the Elva, a car that would pay tribute to McLaren's sports cars from the 1960s, the M1A, M1B, M1C. And this is where the name came from. So back then Elva cars actually worked with McLaren to help build the cars, the chassis for example. So this is, well, a bit of a tribute over towards that. Some of the inspiration from that car is very clear in the new car, in the way that it's designed. So what we're looking at is this stunning thing. To me, you see hints of the design of the Speedtail, one of the other Ultimate Series cars from the front. And then from the rear, you see some of the elements as well of the 720S, the Ultimate, or sorry, Super Series product from McLaren's lineup. Of course, this is now McLaren's fourth Ultimate Series product. It started with the P1, and yes, of course, McLaren in a previous iteration, I suppose, made the F1, but McLaren Automotive started with the P1, then followed by the Senna, the ultimate track experience, then followed by the Speedtail, which is, of course, the fastest in terms of a Grand Tourer, and now we have what they call the purest possible driving experience that comes from the Elva. They're going to be making 399 units in total, Deliveries will be late in 2020, so we'll follow on from the Senna and the Senna GTR in terms, I think, of the production. It uses a development of the carbon fiber tub and the engine that actually come from the Senna. So we are talking, for example, the four liter twin turbocharged V8. In the Senna, it made 800 horsepower and 800 newton meters. In the Elva, it is actually bumped slightly to 815 metric horsepower and still 800 newton meters, which means that this car being even lighter than the Senna can do the 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, 62 miles per hour sprint in under three seconds, and the 0 to 200 kilometers per hour, 124 mile per hour sprint in just 6.7 seconds. The Senna did that in 6.9. Of course, having a gigantic rear wing doesn't exactly help with straight line acceleration in the Senna terms, but this is lighter and more powerful and slipperier through the air. Some simple maths tells you it's going to be a touch faster. Those are the only performance figures we have at this stage. No complete top speeds or anything like that but of course the engine mid-rear mounted powered also through the seven speed dual clutch seamless shift transmission from McLaren. So this is one other thing. So it's based on a development of the carbon fiber monocell 2 chassis, the carbon fiber tub but to me it's a little bit rinse and repeat. You've got a carbon tub, mid-engined, 4 litre twin turbo V8, 7 speed dual clutch gearbox, but with a different body on top of it. Now of course it's a lot more than that. There are many technologies unique to this car, and one of those is what you see right at the very front of it in the form of the Active Air Management System, the AAMS. Now the way this works is you can see that large duct or, or exit that you have over the entirety of the front end of the car, but basically it has taken air in through the very nose. Guide comes in through the nose of the cone, it's nose cone of the car itself. It then goes out over the through that opening on the bonnet over the top of the cabin, which creates this area inside for the driver and passenger of calm air in the cabin because it's all being pushed over the top. 
McLaren, as always, engineering new technologies, new ways of doing things, and that in this case um, comes into life when you're driving above town speeds, I believe above about 25 miles per hour or so, that starts working and means that it's actually quite calm in the car and you can drive it without a helmet on. Depending on regions, there are different specifications. For example, in the US, it's only show and display unless you get an optional windshield. I'm not quite sure what the car will look like with a windshield, but you don't actually, here in the UK at least, um, need to wear a helmet. I'm not necessarily sure the weather is going to agree uh, with that. But looks-wise, overall, it is a stunning thing. There's no doubt about that. And in fact, the carbon fiber bodywork, of course, as well as carbon underpinnings, the whole of the body is made from carbon fiber, like with the Senna, is actually only three pieces. The whole of the front clamshell is one single part, as is basically the rear. And then I think the tonneau cover, in addition to that, of course, the doors, which are the dihedral style doors, opening upwards and outwards uh, are in addition. But the actual bodywork itself barely consists of all that many parts overall. Around towards the back you do have the full width rear wing. Um, it operates with DRS and as an active air brake so when you stamp your foot on the floor it will flip right up to become an air brake. If you're stamping on the accelerator, if it's in aero mode it will actually sit flat to lower the drag coefficient to give you even more acceleration, um, of course reducing drag along the way. But the interior is where things for me start to get really quite interesting about the new Elva. You've got a significant change from any McLaren before in the fact that you don't have the roof. The Senna had the innovative, I guess, well, innovation of introducing some of the buttons up on the roof if you wanted to pop it into race mode, for example, and the door controls, they're all up above you. What McLaren have done with the Elva is to move some of the controls to the instrument binnacle. So right in front of where you are, of course, holding the steering wheel, which is uncluttered, no buttons there at all, just the paddle shifters on the back, the rocker-style paddles for the seven-speed DCT. In front of that, you have the additional controls for the ESC and also for the active dynamics panel. So to go through your various different normal uh, comfort sport race different modes however the car is going to offer them in total you can do that in arm's reach without taking your hands off the steering wheel which is really pretty cool in the center you have the infotainment similarly to the Senna it's mounted it's an 8 inch display mounted positioned high and towards the driver so you don't have to take your eyes or divert them too far from your field of vision to be able to take a look at all of the different controls and it has a carousel to enable you to use multiple different apps at the same time to flick between different settings. All new McLaren are saying uh, in the way that they've introduced them for the Elva. About the cabin in general though, you will of course notice the seats are a new design for the car. Based I think on the uh, original kind of or previous design but changed towards the upper end to fit more seamlessly with the design. Now the design of the car of course has these two buttresses right behind. And they do actually offer uh, a tonneau storage space so when you open up that rear deck there are storage compartments to have a helmet on either side because of course you can drive the car out on the track so those are positioned right behind um, where you're sat inside the car that's the only storage that it has available nothing in the front I guess similarly in a way to the center the space that the center has for helmets right behind the seat this car obviously though not being designed out and out to go to the racetrack but another thing about the seats is that they're actually a little bit shorter in terms of where they sit underneath your thighs so that you can actually stand up to get in and out of the car so you can be standing fully inside the car, well obviously not while driving, to make getting in and out or ingress and egress as they would say uh, a little bit easier. Now I've always been a big fan of this style of car. When for example Mercedes-Benz made the SLR McLaren Sterling Moss with that incredibly long bonnet front mounted engine, in this case we've got the engine behind, and then more recently Ferrari launched the Monza SP1 and SP2. So I think it's great to have this as an offering in this segment. The problem is that here in the UK we don't really have the weather for a car like this. A few other options though that are available, I talked a little bit about the windscreen, there's also a six point harness, six point seatbelt harness option that's available for the car, um, should you wish to drive it perhaps more uh, in anger out and about. Um, of course there'll be many 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 MSO configurations, a full exposed visual carbon fibre body, velocity style paintworks where it will blend from one paint colour all the way through to another, basically enhancing the opportunity for everybody to have a completely unique vehicle. Of course that will come with a price and we will talk about the 
price very, very shortly. Um, what else do we have? Oh, as standard, no audio. There's no sound system as standard. Of course, the ethos is to keep this car as lightweight as possible, and the best way to achieve that is not to fill it with technology that isn't necessarily warranted or required. Now, we don't have a weight, but knowing the Senna is 1198 kilos with all of its aero, the big wing, and having a roof, we've got to be talking at least 1100, something like that for this car, which in modern day terms is an inc incredibly lightweight vehicle. That's going to weigh almost next to nothing. Now to save some of that weight, two things that stand out to me. The first, the front clamshell is only 1.2 millimeters thick. I imagine that you could take that entire piece and pick it up with your little finger. Another thing that they've done is the car uses a development of the Senna's brakes, which are of course insane, I can tell you from my own track experience, and actually adds titanium caliper pistons to save one kilo all around. That's the kind of level and detail that McLaren are going to. Now I do need to show you what's inside here, but before we do, let me tell you in a little bit more detail why, for me at least, the Elva isn't going to be a future Schmiemobile. And the first, and I think overriding thing that will summarise this in a nutshell, is that the price of the car is £1.425 million, including VAT, £1,425,000. Now to put that into some perspective, the Senna was £750,000, so we're talking double, double the price. So one point four two five could buy you the Senna plus my Ford GT plus have about £155,000 spare. You can see, for me, that would have meant clearing out my entire garage to purchase a car that, like I touched on, with no roof here in the UK, is going to hinder when you can really actually use it, which is slightly inconvenient. Now, nothing to say bad about the car. I think it looks incredible, and I love McLarens, as you know. I've owned now five in total. From the 12C, the 650, the 2675s, and then the Senna. So I'm a big fan. I imagine this will be an amazing car to drive, an exhilarating driving experience, particularly without the roof, but for all of about 10 days a year that you could actually drive it. So for me, it's just a little bit too much of a stretch, as well as being quite similar to the Senna, which of course is staying in my garage. Another thing is that I like different brand experiences, different opportunities, and well, you can see how that kind of crosses over, for me at least. Out in California or somewhere, this thing would be awesome. Let's move on though to show you what we've got inside this box, and I'm sorry for going on about it quite so much, but let me just slide off this slip cover that is over the top. And this is not the first thing that has come from McLaren to do with the Senna actually uh, on this. I was lucky to be uh, given by McLaren Manchester where I bought the car, uh, a paint matched helmet and helmet case to go with my car. Then we also received as Senna owners a numbered book that told the entire story of the car with your VIN number on it as well. But in here is the latest thing to arrive. And let me try and open this so that you can see what we've got. A model Ayrton Senna helmet from 1988. Now I love these kind of things. They are truly part of the experience. Being a first owner of a car like this carries with it so many memories and unique touches. And this goes with the Ford GT, with the Senna, and to be honest, Toyota did a fantastic job at this with the GR Supra as well. But this is the kind of thing that I will keep forever and will of course rest one day in the future Schmiemobile man cave. That is the dream. Of course, I will take out the bit of padding that's up there at the top just to make it look a little bit prettier, but I will keep a hold of that uh, and treasure it. Very, very special, and the Brazilian colours uh, of Ayrton Senna's helmet. I think probably one of the most distinct and recognisable helmet designs out there uh, in the entire world. So a cool little touch, big thanks to them for that. So there we have it, McLaren Elva. A first look, a first talk about it, why, unfortunately, it won't be a future Schmiemobile, but how I would very much look forward to a drive and an opportunity to film with one and show you all of the details in person and a little bit about the experience, which no doubt will happen at some point in the future. For now, though, thank you very much for watching and for your support, as always, guys. That's it for this time, though. I will see you again very soon. Cheers!